Hello! Welcome to this video based around the DMT mechanisms unit of work, looking at levers and linkages. In this short video, I'm going to show you some pop-up books that I have purchased recently, looking at the various levers and sliders within the book to show you how they can transform the information on a page. So this would be introduced to the children as part of the investigative and evaluative activities. So they would have the book in front of them and they would play with it and investigate and evaluate how the levers and sliders worked. So that when it came to working with levers and sliders themselves, they, could, they had a better understanding of how to use them and maybe some of the possibilities and outcomes of how how their levers and sliders might work. So I first want to look at this ear, inner ear here and you can see that when I pull this linear lever so it's outwards the eardrum makes a clicking noise and when I put it back in you can see this movement here. So that's a linear movement and we've got clicking. I wonder what's making that sound. And then you can see here that we've got this up and down oscillating movement. So it's a quite a simple lever with a fixed pivot somewhere that is showing it moving up and down. And then we come over to this side where we can see that when I'm pulling this linear lever, so we've got movement coming in and outwards, we've got this movement here in an arc shape. So that's known as an oscillating movement. And then we come down to here and to the cochlea and we can pull this lever in a linear fashion again, in and out. But you can see it reveals other information in a sort of pleated fashion. I wonder how that happens. So then we turn over a couple pages and we've got the rib cage. And this is all to do with blood, not that it's very relevant. And you can see that we pull out this linear lever and we've got a crank and slide mechanism inside. So we pull it but because we're pulling it, something's turning inside. How does that happen, I wonder? So these are all the sorts of questions we want to be asking the children. How do you think that works? How would you replicate this in your own work? Could you make a mock-up of how to do this? So now we've got a linear movement. But... These two pieces are moving closer together, so that's in parallel. And then we can do the same here, a linear movement, but they're moving apart from each other. Oh, I wonder what that's called. How could we show our understanding and practice this? And then we've got this page, which is to do with muscles. And once again, we've got this linear movement down here, so I'm pulling it down. But can you see we've got two different types of movement here. So we've got movement here within the muscle fibre. And we've got it here within the arm. So we can see how, how can we make it move in two places just pulling one lever. That would be something to explore wouldn't it. And then we've got here. We've just got a simple... I believe a fixed pivot which makes it move in a rotary movement. Okay, so let's have a look at our next book. And for this book, it is here. So here we've got levers and sliders again in this pop up book about the world. And we can see that this is a very simple sort of lever. So it's in a slot, you can see the slot here, as I push it along, something pops up. Oh, I wonder if we could recreate that in our own work. What materials do you think they may have used? 
Ah, okay, so we've got this dinosaur page now. And I can see that if I move this lever up and down, we've got an oscillating movement, this lever. How could we recreate that in our own work? Is it effective? Does it add to the book? And this one, we've got a little loose pivot, so it spins. And then up here, Oh, that's effective. How could we do that? I wonder. Who do you think this book might appeal to? Is a really another, another nice question to ask the children. Then we've got another simple lever there, just to add a bit of extra information. And then we'll go to the end of the book where we've got this cloud down here. So I've got a linear movement, but you can see it twists around. Wonder how else we could get we could get something else to move like that in our own product. How could we recreate that? Lovely. And here's our third and final book. So this one's based upon the Olympics. Hard to fit it all in, but we'll skip, get the gist of it. So we've got a linear movement here. But as you can see, we've got two things moving again. So we've got this high jumper and this javelin moving. It's quite an old book. So we've got a bit of an oscillating movement. And we come here to this Volta. Oh, look at that movement. What materials could we use to recreate that movement for ourselves? And then we've got this long jumper here. And we want to be probing all the time, asking the children, what materials could we make this from if we were going to make it ourselves? How, what mechanism could we use? How could we try it? That's quite a nice one. This, the mechanisms in this book really bring it alive. And then we've got a little bit of movement there. Nice simple lever here, which is highly effective. This is really nice. Got another one up here. How do we do that, I wonder? And then a simple linear lever down here, which is really nice. Then on this page, we've got lots of the same type of lever. So it's linear, so we're pulling it up and down, but it's making the people turn. I wonder how we could explore that. How could we, how could we recreate that in our own? products and then this is our final page it's really nice so we've got this one this basketball player up here he's shooting wow so while doing this i'll be asking the children to take a real close look at the book what's what's going on with this mechanism under here while i slide this slider i would also encourage the children this page is quite nice. This book's quite nice because you can look in between the pages and see all the different mechanism joints inside. So we've got a nice linear one here again. Nice. Down here we've got our kayaker. These would just be really nice to create um, a poster or a card from when you're DT activities and I love this one isn't it great so how could the children reintroduce this to their own product so these investigative and evaluative activities are really important for when you're introducing the idea of levers and linkages to your DT lessons 
So make sure you do these investigative and evaluative activities and show them how, they, how these are used in the real world. I hope this video was useful. Thank you.